Hello, this is Plunder Basics with Guy, and I am here today talking about painting cannons. Now, as anybody who's watched this has probably uh, gathered, I am not the most skilled painter in the world, uh, even good, I would say, uh, but I love playing this game. So I have painted up a lot of things, and one of the things that was frustrating at first were these little cannons that we all want to put on our ships. Every sh Firelock Games ship you buy comes with a full complement of light cannons. Or at least it does now. It used to not. Or at least I found some products that don't. And you also have the option of buying larger cannons. Up to heavy cannons, even though they can only be on two ships in the line right now and two fortifications. Now, as someone who's been, who has a little mini fleet of my own, I currently own, how many was it? 40 unpainted light cannons and 22 painted light cannons for a total of 62 light cannons. It is a lot of cannons. I am quite proud of how many unpainted light cannons I have. I used to paint a full complement of light cannons for every ship I painted, but then I got to 22 light cannons and decided to stop doing that. These are a few of my painted light cannons, and as you see, I have a simple painting system where I just do the carriage. The carriage is the wood thing that it's on. I do the carriage red. I put a wash on it. And then I paint the barrel, and then I do a uh, dry brush of uh, metallic. These are supposed to be uh, bronze. And then I did some, these, this was one of the first light cannons I painted too. This is a supposed to be like a, a steel or a, it, it should have been iron. And then this is one of my medium cannons. Uh, this one was for my Corvette. So I actually took the time to paint the little latch that goes that holds the cannon in place. And this is to show you how these come and how we're what we're gonna do. Uh, I am going to be painting some aftermarket light cannons for, as deck guns for my six rate because I liked how they have a little decoration on top. Probably cannot see that at all, but they have a little decoration on top and they look a little bit different than the firelock ones. We'll get one of the painted ones up here. So they have a little bit of decoration and the firelock ones, they actually, the barrels do have a right side up when you're assembling the firelock ones. If you look at it, they will have, although some, sometimes their mold kind of erases the detail, but they do have the little spot in the back, that is where the match goes when they want to fire it. So the basic concept of a cannon is all a cannon is, is a tube. In fact, the word cannon means tube. And it is just a tube that has a small opening at the top of the back. And so it's a very simple, it's not even a machine, it's a very simple tool. You put uh, gunpowder there, some type of uh, wad to create a, a stopper, and then you put your ammunition in front of it. And then what you do is you have your, your wick, your, uh, not wick, your match and or you can I guess you can have a, a a fuse leading out but you would you put fire in that small enclosed space and the gunpowder ignites and wants to expand rapidly and that pushes out the cannonball that's all a cannon is it it's it's cannons were not and uh, very accurate because the barrels did not have uh, rifling at all. And yeah, so so we, and, and as I just described, it was very, very simple. They have, this was before, um, before rounds. So current firearm technology is you have 
a, a container like this and it's a metal container with a uh, firing pin area in the back um, that will usually the hammer will strike that will still create a fire in there and that fire will push out the ammunition that's at the top in a sealed area and then that ammunition will follow the length of the barrel and it will have rifling which is just a a a, a uh, groove um, to encourage the bullet to spin because if it's spinning it's it's more accurate it doesn't have to it's it's not beholden to um, the forces <laughs> I don't know I'm like the the cool thing about this game is I I wasn't super into guns at all uh, so I had to to, to try uh, garnering it all um, anyway so that is what a cannon is. In Blood and Plunder, we have these little models to represent the cannons. The little ones... Now, now Firelock Games has never said, oh, this is what each size should be. Because in Firelock, uh, in Blood and Plunder, I mean, Blood and Plunder has three sizes of cannons. When in history, there was more than three sizes of cannon. There was um, a lot of different sizes. Because the, the thing that differentiated between the different cannons was uh, two things. It was the size of the bore that the hole that you put the ammunition in. And it was also the length of the barrel because they they found out uh, in history very, very, not early on, but uh, you know, at, at, after enough time, they found out that a longer barrel would make the cannon more accurate and more able to engage the enemy at further away. So, and whereas a shorter barrel was easier and quicker to load and had a, uh, easier and quicker to load and you were able to use, use it more as a, as a, a close range bombardment sort of thing. Uh, so that's where we got the, the lots of different variation in cannon names, uh, all with, with really cool names, there's uh, Colovins and and Drakes, and half half Colovins. I know I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Lots of the history of the cannon is uh, a fascinating one. But for Blood and Plunder, we have three sizes. This one is probably less than a three inch bore, uh, three inch in diameter. Um, in the for the light cannons, they usually would fire of the air in 17th century less than a three pound shot. So that would be like a, a three pound um, lead or iron ball. And then uh, if you look at if you look at them, they do have a larger hole for the mediums. So this is probably more than three and a half inch, you know, three and a half inch to four inch or more. And then the uh, I don't have any uh, any heavy cannons. I haven't bought any of the Firelock heavy cannons because I don't like them, but. They those have a, a larger bore as well. So uh, eight, you know, let's get to painting. <laughs> that's that's enough about cannons. Uh, as I said, I picked up these other ones, even though I have sixty two of the light cannons. The deck guns of the six rate I always interpreted as want to be the they want to be a little fancier because they are on the uh, quarter deck and the poop deck, and um, so I wanted to get ones that are a little fancier, that aren't my usual light cannons. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm drinking, by the way, a 10-barrel brewing uh, pub beer. Now, I must say, I haven't been to a bar in uh, more than a year. It's killing me. So uh, to start, my easy way to paint these is I talked to Joseph right before this, at, uh, from Blood and Pigment. And what he's been doing with his, with his carriages is he will, kind of like what I'm gonna do, hold it in one side and use a brush to apply his contrast paint to that side. And then do as many as he needs, pick it up and apply contrast paint to the other side. And then he's done. So we're, we're actually gonna do something quite similar 
as you see, uh, when painting these, do not assemble them before painting them. It's far easier. Uh, I have a gloved hand. You can do it ungloved, but I find that a glove gets less paint on my hand <laughs> because uh, we're gonna we're gonna be kind of messy. I for a task like this, uh, like I was saying, I am not the world's most gifted painter. So, but uh, to a task like this, we're going to use a large brush. And then I'm, I'm using my cheap red paint. This is bright red. And I got my palette. It's a nice spot for red. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold one side and then apply the paint. And I'm going to, uh, using, the, using the large brush, I want to make sure I get into any nooks and crannies on this side. Now you don't have to worry as much about the underside of the cannon because usually when you're playing you're never going to see it. Uh, it's a good idea to hit it up with your paint because you can. Now uh, it is a red color because you know I don't I have not read this. But I am going to surmise that it was painted, that the cannons of the air were painted red because they wanted to, the crew to always be aware of them. Red is a nice color to see. Uh, it's also, um, the gun walls on the inside of the ship were also painted red. And they, they had the effect of when sailing and they would open their gun ports, it would let the opponent see how many guns they have as a sort of intimidation. So that one's done. See, that's, that's all we're doing on this. Uh, I try always doing the same side, so I know where I stand. Anyways, also during the 17th century, they had the belief that if you, that paint would stop things from rusting when it was made out of iron. So any, anything that they have that was made out of iron, they would paint always. So even though you'll see a lot of things that should be metal bits on these, it's okay to paint them. I give you permission. Uh, it's okay to paint them because, again, the sailors of the air would have painted them thinking that it would help stop them from rusting. Um, which it doesn't. Uh, paint... Paint does not stop iron from being oxidized at all. So that one's done. We got six of these because I bought the four deck guns on the back of the six rate and the two chasers in the front. Even though I'll probably never use chasers in the front of the six rate, it um takes way too much. And those those swivels are usually more valuable on the six rate. Also, as much as I like the, the sculpt of the six rate, the can the cannons in the front, um, especially because you're putting a sail and a figurehead right in front of them, um, and the beak, the the cannons would would also would shoot out like at a forty five degree angle and would never shoot directly ahead. But the rules of the game state that you would want to always shoot directly ahead. There's no way to measure their cannon range other than directly ahead. Kind of the, um, the galleon has the same problem because its chasers are uh, aligned in such a way that if the uh, sprit sail is down, then it would not really be able to shoot the guns as effectively. So as you see, we're just moving right along. Um, when I'm painting, you know, you gotta, you have to be aware that you're not leaving too thick of a paint on any part because when you're painting quick like this, it's it's gonna happen that you have a might have a glob of paint. Luckily, we're gonna be we're going to review our work after we get to the end. Make sure that all of those are gone. So uh, I told you Joseph's way of painting is with the contrast paint. Mine, 
I do apply a layer of coat or a coat of paint like this and then I'll do both sides. This is also usually if I'm painting figures or something else and I've applied a wash, I will let my wash dry and then, you know, do these cannons really quick. There we go. Because as, as you see, this is this is not a long process for these. And then once all my paint is dry, I will apply my wash. Um, kind of it, when applying the wash, I'll hold it by the front and I'll apply the wash evenly on each side. Uh, that's because when using these, the front is also not super important because that is where the part of the model that gets butted up against the chip. So it's not, the color that you make the front is not as important or you don't really need to wash there as much. Uh, I like applying the wash evenly to each side because even with a wash sometimes, um, even when you're doing the same color, if you do two different if you put it on two different times, you'll sometimes see overlap. So I'm going to clean my brush off really quick. All right, that is half of six cannons done. So now I'm just going to investigate my work. Drink some beer. So let's see. Let's see. Oh. Uh. Those look good. You know, I know I said I'm gonna put a wash, but I did do some, uh, these came these came from Ages of Sale. Uh, these are their 20 millimeter. Yeah, I think these are their 20 millimeter cannons. And uh, they came, they're made out of, uh, I believe, brass. Um, and they came with a, a wash on them already. This is the unedited cannon barrel. That that honestly looks good enough for me. I'm just gonna leave it there. So that one's good. Uh, I'm now. This is the investigation side. I'm just looking for any any pools of paint that are going to take away detail. Yeah. Nothing there. When I'm, I'm working in a series like this, I always make sure I always have the, the, the same order. I either work from the top down. So as I place them, I'll place them at the top. And then I'll come, when I'm coming to, from, to them again, I'll start from the top and then I'll move them to a, a separate pile uh, just to keep track of them. It's... You want to do you want to do little tricks for yourself when painting like this, because because it's Im important to to work quickly. You know your time is important when you're painting. Yeah, this one looks good. Your time is important, so you should maximize it as much as you can. Um, I'm not saying like beat yourself up if you do something wrong. But it's always it's always nice to find little ways to make it so that you can get what you want done uh, in the time that you have it. So little things like when you're working in a batch like this, saying, well, I start the furthest away from me and I work towards me. Or I always paint, like in this one, I painted every carriage's left side so I can then paint its right side. That way, if something happens and you have to get up and come back, you see where you are. If uh, you're watching something or you're listening to something or even watching something and you get interested in what you're watching to turn around and, and engage with it or you have a phone call happen or anything, then you can come right back and jump into the same spot, which is 
you know, I don't have to tell you how useful that is. Um, and then you'll save a lot of your time that where you're sitting there going, wondering where you are, uh, or trying to figure it out. If you have an unfailable memory, then you don't have to do these tricks. But as someone who does not have the, that, I find that uh, shortcuts or finding ways, processes that work for me is the best. And so this, so what I am, now that I investigated them, I'm now moving on to do the other side. Now you'll run into, <clears throat> once I get to the bottom, some of these will, of, it might not be completely dry. That is okay. Uh, it really is. The way that you hold it will usually be uh, grasping the underside. So, I will not, it should not rub off a lot of paint. That's, that's also what the glove is for, is to make it so you do not rub off paint when you're painting it, because we are touching stuff that has, you know, very, very non-dry paint. <clears throat> very fresh paint, I mean. So, we don't want to rub off any of that that lovely paint that we just applied. When applying the second coat, or I mean the, the second side, like I am doing right now, it's also the time where you want to look on the whole model and try seeing any spots that you missed. Because that way, this is your time, if there is everyone, to get those spots. Because... In this case, I'm not even going to give a wash to these. I, I love the color so much. I will probably paint the wheels black. Wheels are made of wood on these, as is the side. But I might, I might decide to keep them all red. I don't know. kind of really like the deck guns of the six rate uh, and reading a lot of the uh, historical stuff about the larger ships that were available because I, I was trying to research the the galleon when I was like okay I'm gonna before painting it what am I gonna do with this and every galleon would have you know guns this side the, the it would never have heavy cannons <laughs> on the, 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 the topmost decks. Um, oh, that's the other, you know, that's the other thing in, you know, well, in um, decks, decks are traditionally uh, both ver vertical and horizontal. So the, the topmost gun ports of a large uh, ship of the line or, or a, a warship of the air would only have small guns, whereas near closer to the waterline is where they would put their heavy guns. And that is because they did not want to, um, they didn't want to be top heavy. Uh, ships had to worry about a number of things um, that, that weight attributed to, and one of them was buoyancy. And weight distribution so as uh from joseph uh joseph on blend and pigment his uh canon article which i suggest everybody reading even these light cannons uh where they only are meant to fire a two pound shot which you know that's gonna be that's gonna be like the size of a plum or something um even then they can weigh between 400 and 500 pounds. So, and the larger guns were just unbelievably heavy. We're talking about, you know, one ton, one and a half ton for the, the giant cannons. That would be a, a heavy cannon blend blender. So in, in that context, it does not make sense that the guns that are 
at the top of the forecastle, for instance, on the Galleon, those would never be heavy cannons. Um, they would never. They're just they're too too high above the waterline. Now the Galleon does, um, the Galleon does kind of represent uh, a very large ship. It's uh, as has been pointed out. It's uh, undergun undergun compared to ships of the air. So that's a reason why you might have all heavy cannons and there's also the problem that there's not a way to distinguish in blood and plunder currently where cannons would be allowed to be um based when they're a section there's no designation for all right this is a like i think they just added the names for the individual decks those those didn't really have a term in Blood and Plunder right now, but I've seen, I've noticed that uh, they snuck in some words where the the foremost deck is going to be the forecastle <clears throat> or the fort. No, I think it's going to be the fore deck, and the the middle one is going to be the main deck, and then we always say poop deck, which I uh, I used to giggle at, but I don't. I think that's a sign of maturity. Um, the poop deck is going to be the deck most in the rear uh the stern of the ship and then the and then if it's a four deck ship the one right before will be the quarter deck but I, i've also heard them say that the they're going to make the the rearmost one on ships into the quarter deck we'll have to see the it is really kind of fascinating watching it ha uh, happen like this. When we were doing our ship reviews, we had to, like, come up with all the names for it. So, or confirm. Anyways, that, as exciting as that is, that is uh, Plunder Basics uh, Painting Cannons. Uh, let's look at our first one. I'm not wearing my gloves anymore. That That is a beautiful cannon. Uh, it has... Because of that wash already, it already has that detail there. It has that, uh, that dull red color I like. Stuff already stands out. Yeah, I'm not even going to wash these. These are done. That's it. That's I finished up my guns. So let's, let me put this on here to see how it looks. Very nice. Already done. And that, that is painting cannons. Anyways, if you like our channel, go ahead and uh, like some and subscribe. We're going to put out some more content lately. We had uh, the Storm of the Century uh, recently that put a damper on most of our content creation. Sorry about that. Snap. Uh, and so, but we have some, some new videos and articles that we're working out soon. Go ahead and hit up bloodandpigment.com to check out all our articles. And I'll see you around.